One minute late. Just one minute. Welcome back to Talos of Tech, live on YouTube, ladies and gentlemen. It's very refreshing to say that. It's been nearly two weeks since my last stream. I'm a recovering stream addict, but I hope you guys are having a fantastic day. Uh, Tuesday for everybody. Um, I missed you all, seriously. It was, it, I'll admit though, it was refreshing um, to get away from work for a while and just kind of focus on my surroundings. We we spent some time at the zoo. We uh, spent a lot of time at the beach. We spent a lot of time with family and hanging out. So it was a great anniversary trip. I appreciate everybody for saying uh, in the comments, you know, hope you have a good trip and thank you for uh, um taking some time to yourself. Just basically all of the well wishes I appreciate. Um, you guys have been very generous and very supportive, so I'm thankful that uh, we were able to get some time off and just enjoy each other's company. We were kind of uh, uh, begrudgingly coming back to work this morning. of just like, okay, all right. Now, I was excited to stream again, but um, unfortunately my wife's job is not as fun, likely, as mine is. But um, waiting for Spider-Man trailer. Oh, yeah, that's today, isn't it? Right. Okay, I'm excited for that too. So, of course, um, I did not stay too in touch with the news while I was away. Um, I briefly, in between trips and in between hanging out with family and, and checking out uh, stuff in the... I, can, I guess I can say now that I'm gone. I visited the San Diego area um, for a while. But uh, I... Roughly caught a few news things, um, but I didn't catch everything. Probably the biggest one that I'm seeing um, a lot of people already bring up in the chat is that YouTube removed the dislike counter, um, which of course all of my devices are now reflecting. So that's that's obviously kind of a weird, kind of a bizarre subject to start on. But yeah, um, I think way too many people kept saying YouTube removed the dislike button, which I think is a bit of a oversimplification because the button is still there and the creator can still see how many dislikes a video has. It's just that the dislike button is not public, which is a tad weird. Um, yeah, this is kind of to be expected from YouTube at this point. It's like there's always some kind of huge cataclysmic, very obvious problem with the, with the website and there's something very, very fixable that YouTube doesn't want to... <laughs> fix and then they'll go ahead and break something else <laughs> while everyone is asking them to fix it's like okay youtube you should address this problem like the bots in the comments thing i i made that video a while back and i was like you know this is a video i feel like i should make but um it doesn't really need to come out while i'm here so i figured it'd be good for my trip didn't mind any of the videos you posted during your vacation cool I haven't read the comments on any of them, by the way. I have not. I have not checked up on those videos. I basically uh, made a couple videos this morning and um, caught up in Discord a bit. And I've been this morning trying to catch up on all, my, all the YouTube channels I watch. Um, so I'm still getting through all of the stuff I've missed while I was away. Um, but yeah, I was like, th there's so clearly a bunch of issues with the YouTube comment uh, program. And yet, they don't want to fix that. They just want to remove the dislike counter, which, yeah, uh, okay. You want my opinion? I agree with everybody. It doesn't make any sense. Um, the first thought I had as soon as I saw that, I was like, okay, well, this maybe it's kind of nice for YouTubers that uh, have controversial videos and they get a lot of dislikes on those videos. So now the public doesn't see what the dislike counter is for those controversial videos. I mean, I've been in that boat myself. Um, so I guess it's, I don't know, the, the dislikes are still there though, they don't, <laughs> I don't know if that really changes anything, it's like they were attempting to, it's like they were attempting to preserve YouTuber mental health by saying, okay, you can still see how many dislikes you got, it's just not everybody else will see how many dislikes you got, which I, <laughs> I don't understand how, is that better? I don't know. It's such a weird, like, it, it makes perfect sense uh, for YouTube to do this because to me it makes, uh, like, they always want to fix something that isn't broken and they always want to ignore and neglect things that clearly are broken. And the first thought I had, this was the point I was trying to get to later, was that as soon as I heard that YouTube got rid of the dislike uh, option, I actually found out through um, MQBHD's video, I, my first thought was, Someone's just going to comment on every video, dislike, and then everyone will just like that comment as an alternative to the 
dislike button. So this doesn't even solve really the problem that uh, the, the non-existent problem that YouTube is trying to solve. So I, I feel like my voice on this subject is not an original one. I'm sure many people have probably said the exact same things I'm saying right now. But the difference is I've gotten canceled a lot. All right. <laughs> this is a guy who has been a vict uh, victim. I'm using that term very, very loosely. Um, it's probably not even a good term. I've been on the receiving end of videos that get tons and tons of dislikes. Okay, even recently, I'll have hot takes or controversial opinions that get a lot of dislikes, and um, I watched that. I watched that uh, like bar turn into a Sith, a Sith's lightsaber with a big red bar <laughs> on each of my videos. And yes, I know that that can be embarrassing and that can be humiliating, but um, I think that's okay. You know, we need. <laughs> That may that may sound insensitive, but I think it's true. Like we we need some videos to to be held uh, accountable, and yeah, sometimes there's a bit of a hype dislike train that formulates on certain videos. Uh, but I I think most of the time it's justified. I've been wrong, um, and and there's been times where I certainly have deserved a lot of the dislikes, or I just struck a chord with the wrong audience, and a lot of people disagreed with me, and I've I've found that to be the case most of the time. Um, people will dislike the video because they disagree with what I say. It's most of the time not like they fundamentally hate me and they dislike me as a person. They just dislike my opinion and the video is, you know, a, a piece of content that is formulating my opinion. And I don't think there's anything wrong with expressing your disagreement with someone like that. Um, so I, I am saying this as someone that does not usually play it safe and will typically have controversial opinions that get lots of dislikes. Um, and I'm saying, yeah, the, no, the dislike button is fine. It can stay there. Um, I, don't, I don't think this helps anything and I don't think it fixes anything because you're just going to, on controversial videos, you're just going to have a comment at the top that says, like this comment and dislike this video. So doesn't fix anything. And yes, I completely agree with Marquez. Um... The comment section absolutely needs a lot of attention. I've always thought it would have made more sense for the comment section to to hold like memes or gifs, um, if you wanted to reply with. I, I feel like Twitter offers that, Imgur offers that. Um, so there's so much where, and of course the bots are a serious problem. Like the fact that I can block an account or hit hide user on this channel and it will not hide those users on the channel or it will not stop the bot from commenting. Like it's clearly very, very broken the way it is. Um, so I, I don't get it personally, but, um, sorry, the chat's saying a lot, so I should probably catch up. They didn't remove the dislike button. They hid the amount of dislikes from the pet. Yeah. Don't mind any of the videos you posted. He's back. Glad you're back safe. Yes, I'm glad I'm back safe too. Um, Test T-Mobile Home Internet. You know, I saw that becoming available, but I read a lot of reviews on it and I wasn't terribly impressed. So for those who don't know, I do use Mint Mobile and Mint Mobile is piggybacking off of the T-Mobile network. However, a lot of people look at that as a downside. They're like, oh, that means you're deprioritized. And while you technically are, the majority of speed tests I've seen people do where they compare the speed of Mint Mobile to T-Mobile in the same location on similar hardware, they don't notice a big difference in speed. It might be like 5% slower, but it's it's usually not like a deal breaker of like, well, if you were on T-Mobile, you could play this video at 1080p, but because you're on Mint Mobile, you have to play it at 240p. It's, it's always like you can basically do the exact same stuff. Um, so I know essentially, and I also did the T-Mobile test drive app with, uh, through the eSIM on my phone, um, so I know how good the T-Mobile signal is from my house. It's okay, but it's definitely not better than Starlink. Um, that's for sure. Uh, particularly with upload. And a lot of people I've been talking to have been like, first of all, um, the T-Mobile home internet thing you can buy is um, also deprioritized from traditional uh, T-Mobile phones on the network. So let... <laughs> If you're saying Mint Mobile is slow, then, well, the, the home internet thing would be just as slow. And I watched several reviews of it, and they said it was spotty and kind of unreliable. Um, and that might improve over time, and I would maybe consider it if I was getting substantially better T-Mobile speeds at my house uh, that was, like, miles better um, 
than Starlink uh, for less money, but right now that's not really the case. Also, I'm just a big fan of SpaceX. I want to support them. I want to fund Starlink anyway. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm not terribly interested in the home internet thing. Uh, I I guess I could buy it, do a video on it, and then cancel. But I don't I don't think my opinion would be very interesting to be honest. Um, without getting political, I feel YouTube removed dislikes because of the president and how many he gets. I personally don't think of, I don't think that's it. I think it's YouTube themselves has been canceled <laughs> several times, whether it's a rewind or I think, uh, Susan, what's your name? It's on my wall here. I don't know how to pronounce her last name, but the CEO of YouTube, Wojcicki, is that it? I don't know. Uh, she she had a YouTube channel briefly and uploaded like two videos and each one got like 99% dislikes. Um, so a lot of YouTube employees are well aware of how they just get hype trains bombarding them. So they themselves were probably annoyed by that of like, okay, once you get a once you get a snowball rolling of dislikes, it'll just keep going until the video's at like 1%. And they were like, okay, we don't like this, so we're going to take it away. And I guess their logic is like most social media doesn't have a dislike button anyway. Which I I guess I see that side of the argument of like, okay, what other platform has a dislike button? But I don't think that's a good reason to... I think Marquez summed it up very, very well. He did a good job responding to them. I, ho I hope YouTube watches MQBHD's video because he said something like um, YouTube is a different type of platform. It's not like it's very helpful to dislike a tweet, but if you search something on YouTube and you're trying to watch a tutorial for a, for a installation or a, or a, you know, tear down or, you know, a, a building something together and you watch a video and it has a bunch of dislikes, that's a very easy and quick way to realize this video is not worth my time. I shouldn't be watching it. So it's kind of a helpful tool for the YouTube platform that isn't super helpful on other platforms because YouTube is kind of different from everybody else. So I I think that logic makes a lot of sense. But again, if, if YouTube's argument is most platforms don't have the dislike button, then why keep it at all? Like it's still there. You're just hiding the, the number of dislikes, which kind of makes the button useless. It's basically a button that alerts the creator that you didn't like the video, but no one else. Which I, I, I would honestly say letting the public know you disliked the video is probably more important information than letting the creator know. I don't think the creator will care at the end of the day. Or if they do, they, they would have cared either way. So um, I can see the dislike. I can still see the dislike counts. Well, some people haven't updated the YouTube app, so maybe that's why. Um, let's see. This just gives more value in posting mean and hurtful comments as opposed to a simple thumbs down. I'd much rather see a thumbs down than called names and attacks in the comments. Yeah, I I agree. People are people are very soft nowadays, I suppose, but I mean it's the internet. Everything's everybody's soft on the internet to a certain point. Um what is Randy? Randy says I'm triggered. <laughs> Drew said something nice about Google. Instant dislike. See, Scott, I support your uh, I support your freedom of hitting the dislike button. The dislike in YouTube videos are there for an important purpose, not just for content creators, but potential viewers. Yeah, I agree. If you're offended by everything, don't use social media. Well, it's good advice, but it's not something they're likely going to listen to. Um, I actually think we should give credit to people who don't like... Um, we should give more credit to people who don't like social media so don't use it i i've run into especially on this trip where i caught up with a lot of former family uh, <laughs> i don't know why i said former where i caught up with family members they're still family i just haven't seen them in a while so i don't know why but um there's a lot of people i know in my personal life that just are not on social media and i say you know what good for you you know they tell me like no i deleted my facebook because i don't like what they're doing and i don't like zuckerberg right i deleted instagram because i didn't like this uh community and i didn't like this these people on it hats off to those people i every time someone tells me they're not on a social media or they don't do that or they don't partake in this i'm always like you're not missing much <laughs> you know like for my job i can justify it a lot because i have a community that is interested in what I have to say, and you guys have been very nice and very friendly and very supportive and respectful, um, for the most part. I mean, there's probably 2% of you that have been kind of negative or hurtful, 
but I consider myself fairly thick-skinned, so I can tolerate that because 98% of it is really great and really insightful and, and informative, and people let me know what I uh, have to learn from, and, and they give me new information. So I have a very unique uh, position with social media between Twitter and Discord and YouTube. Those are the primary platforms I interact on. Um, as a content creator, but if I was not a content creator, I think it would be a very different position. Um, I didn't even realize there used to be a five-star review function like Amazon. Yeah, Michael, I I remember those days. I was kind of like an OG. I wasn't always posting YouTube videos, um, but I was using YouTube in the very, very early days. Like before we even had adequate, adequate is garbage now, but... Um, before we even had internet that could play a YouTube video at our house growing up, we were still using YouTube. We would just have to load the video and then wait like hours and hours and hours for it to play because all we had was dial-up at the time. So that was kind of my first introduction to YouTube was when we were still on dial-up, which if you guys remember back then, it was basically impossible to watch a YouTube video in real time. You'd have to like queue up the video and then wait for several hours for like 20 or 30 seconds of it to load. Very, very slow. Um, I still see the dislike. Yeah, I guess it's there for some people. My T-Mobile service has been terrible for the last month, and I don't understand it because it was great for two years. That's weird, Greystack. I'm sorry. Ben Rainer says, welcome back. Thank you, Ben. Uh, Facebook has an angry button. That's the closest thing to dislike. I guess so. I don't use Facebook that much, but, um, I feel like dislike is more, uh, appropriate. Because I, I could understand a lot of people not being angry by a particular video, but still hitting the dislike button. Um, we're still on dial-up when YouTube came out. High-speed internet became the norm around me in 2003. Well, I've never lived in a major populated area. I've pretty much always lived in rural communities. So I had friends and family members that had faster internet, but uh, we lived way out in the middle of the woods. You know, We were not close to where uh, broadband internet was. So we, we got adequate, like, streaming internet way later than most people did. But I was still interested in tech and, and YouTube and stuff. Um, if you want to see society, society stop being offended, don't mention anyone being offended. Be a better example. Um, yeah, I tried not to. Honestly, I think most of the internet's pretty good. I, I've always lived in a more rural area. I still do. I, just a different rural area now. <laughs> T-Mobile is doing a massive set of tower updates and that's affected service so they can upgrade N41 service in most areas. It's complicated. Basically, in order to advertise crappy 5G more, they need to slow 4G down. Got it. <laughs> 5G will only be faster than 4G if we slow down 4G. <laughs> Big brain. Um, Randy's just offended. <laughs> I'm only on Twitter and YouTube. Facebook is just an awful site. I, it's probably not that bad on a technical level. It's just not where that many people I uh, care to keep up with is there. Um, but yes, I was still on dial-up. Let's see. They say the younger generation is soft, that they also got screwed over more financially than any other generation in the modern era. This too, I also think that uh, the, the newer generations aren't necessarily soft. It's just everyone has a voice now. Um, I, I think people would have probably complained or whined just as much a hundred years ago. They just didn't have a platform. Oh, thank you for the Michael uh, for the super chat, Michael. Social media is like old daytime TV soap operas, sorta, just with less scripting and more politics <laughs> to a certain extent. Um, let those of us who have worked in tower engineering work it out. It will be better at an end user level for T-Mobile soon. <laughs> Right. Yeah, just let me know when it doesn't completely nuke my battery. I gotta say, after driving a lot on this past trip, like, 5G is so dumb. <laughs> Honestly. I saved... I did some side-by-side -side comparisons. If you leave 5G auto on on an iPhone, and you do, like, a road trip where you're driving for 8 to 10 hours, it uses at least twice the battery life as LTE. So I was able to get substantially better battery life out of my 13 Pro Max just by turning 5G off in so many circumstances. And the, the LTE performance was still fine. You could still watch YouTube. You could still post pictures. You could still check email. You could do everything a phone on average is needed for. 
and the battery life was substantially longer. So once again, I feel like, okay, yeah, we got this whole argument about which 5G is faster and how much coverage there is for this type of uh, wavelength and this type of wavelength. At the end of the day, though, even if we had millimeter wave everywhere, the modems were not ready for this. Like, it still sucks the crap out of your battery life. And it's not worth the slight speed advantage, in my opinion. I, I think if you gave people the option between, like, 40 megabits down um, on your phone with a 10-hour battery versus 80 megabits down with a 5-hour battery, 95% of people would choose LTE. Um, most people won't realize it because 5G is on by default, so they just think, oh, my battery's not that great. But seriously, I got so much better battery life just by turning it off. Um, nobody will pay more for better 4G, exactly. So that's why that's why they're not focusing on 4G as much, but I still think that's dumb. Um, let's see. Back in my day was the old offended, to be honest. Yeah. What a throwback on MySpace. Uh, I like to think about what social media hasn't come out yet that will become the norm later. But, you know, I would say, uh, oh, long term, you know how MySpace, that MySpace didn't age well. And Facebook now is becoming the new MySpace. People are like, ew, Facebook, who uses that? But in reality, like billions of people do, especially if you count Instagram and WhatsApp, which people don't think of as Facebook, but it's really all under the same umbrella. Uh, between all these different social media sites, I would say YouTube has aged surprisingly well. I mean, it's it's a site that's got a lot of problems and they make a lot of dumb decisions, but the fact that it was relevant in very, very old internet days, like people were referenced... We, we watched some comedy movie recently um, that was filmed and in, in, it came out in like 2008 or 2009, and they're referencing YouTube way back then, and it's still relevant today, like it still works. It's kind of impressive. Um, of course I'm streaming with the webcam. I always do. Uh, the generation that inherited Great Depression poverty had it much harder. They built prosperity out of nothing. I'm sure previous, I'm, I guarantee you previous generations had it harder, but they also did not have a platform or an outlet to complain on. If we had Twitter in the ages of the depression, or if we had, um, Facebook in the ages of World War II, <laughs> there would have been a lot of complaining. Oh, Jason is a penguin super chatted. Why do you think Steve Jobs enjoyed LSD so much? <laughs> What a great tech question. Um, as someone who doesn't even drink coffee, so yeah, I've definitely never come close to LSD. I've never smoked a single thing in my life. I know some people that are like, I don't smoke. One time I tried this little thing, but one time I tried... Nope. Literally never. Yes, in high school I was offered drugs, but never once did I ever even come close to thinking, yeah, maybe I should say yes, maybe I should try it. Um, so I don't know why he liked it. I assume it provides some kind of out-of-body experience um, that opens up your mind or opens up your thinking. And and I've and I had I can confidently say former friends um, that I'm not friends with anymore uh, tell me you know like hey we should try this or we should try this because it will make us uh, think you know they they thought it was like a healthy decision of like oh this will widen our mental horizon and I'll think more uh, better about things and I'll imagine cooler things and that'll help us in school or in creativity and projects. And, and if, I was like, no, you're dumb. <laughs> uh, those people are not in a good uh, space right now as well. So I can't really say I know anybody that did drugs and then went on to have a successful career or a successful life. Actually, um, I'm not in contact with those people anymore, but the, the last I heard of them was not good. They were not doing well. Um, so I'm thankful of that, but I'm guessing Steve, oh, thank you for the super chat. Um, I'm guessing Steve, uh, found the, the experience enlightening and, and it felt like he understood the universe better. So he thought that it was a good thing, but I, I do think that a lot of those drugs, I don't know much about them, to be honest. Uh, obviously I haven't done them, but I just know that. Uh, I don't want to try them. Uh, based on what I had heard and what I had seen it do to people, I was like, no, nah, I don't, I don't want to get into that. But uh, I, I'm pretty confident Steve likely would have defended his use of it even up in his his uh, later years. I I don't really recall much evidence of him later on saying, yeah, no, I shouldn't have done that. He's like, no, it was. He he probably stands by it. Um, would have standed by it today if he was here, but. Um, 
Yeah, I mean, Steve, Steve had kind of very different ways of looking at the world, and that resulted in a lot of great innovations in technology, but also there was a lot of issues he had with with dealing with people, with his social life and his personal life. He had he had other problems, you know. He's if you guys have been watching me for a while, you know I've never I've never thought of Steve Jobs as a perfect person. Uh, quite far from it. In fact, I think a lot of the biggest and, and greatest innovators and, and, and people that are influential to our history um, typically are really, really good and smart on one subject and then really, really bad and like not very good at other subjects. So it, it kind of like you compensate a bit with, with reality and practicality when you're really, really good at one thing. Um, that's a big question. It's hard. It's hard to dive into, but um, Facebook was smart because they bought their replacement. Everyone I know who doesn't use Facebook has an Instagram. I know several people that don't have either, but, uh, yeah, I, I don't love Instagram either, to be honest. Uh, hey, Stefan, glad you could make it. Okay. Tech Space Cowboy says 5G ultra wide is only useful for densely crowded areas. LTE fails in Chicago with full bars because too many people are on a single tower. 5G only solves that. I'm just not convinced because I know a lot of places with dense populations that were not using 5G technology that were still getting adequate internet. Like in South Korea, people were being clocked at over 300 megabits down on LTE. Um, And this was not in rural communities. So I believe there are ways you can scale the capacity of 4G. um, And I'm convinced that whatever the wavelength wavelength is on 5G, I've never used ultra-wide, um, but even on low band 5G, it eats into your battery substantially. And I I think it's dumb that by turning off a feature that's turned on by default, that most people will never think to turn off, I can get substantially better battery life. Like, I think that's stupid. Um, how was your vacation? It was great. I hate Reddit. The people on there are always the worst, rudest people anywhere on the internet. My wife likes Reddit a lot. I think there's just toxic people on every platform. But maybe there's slightly more on reddit um would you do cbd gummies drew i don't know what those are but likely no considering i don't even drink coffee um because i for one i don't like the taste but for two i don't like how addicted people are to it like i don't i don't mean to step on anybody's toes but (laughs) i know function throughout the day if they did not drink coffee and i didn't like that i didn't want to become like that you know, there's drinks and stuff I like, you know, I, I enjoy um, soda way too much. And I know there's caffeine in that, but that's why we've tried to cut back mo- best we can on soda. Um, so we don't drink soda hardly ever. We definitely don't buy soda. I think the one or two times uh, we've had soda this year is when we're at like a party and it's and it's given to us. We're, <laughs> we're kind of like, oh, no, thanks. But then they just hand out the cup. And, so I'm not going to like if someone at a, at a gathering or something opens a can of soda for me and hands it to me. I'm not going to like pour it out in front of them, (laughs) but, um, I definitely don't incorporate a soda into my daily routine, which I also have, um, a few friends and family that do that where they're like, I I do one a day or I, every meal, at least I got to have a Coke. I got to have my Coke. I need, I need a Pepsi. I need this. I don't do that. Um, I don't like the idea of being kind of attached to any kind of, uh, substance. And, um, I already think I have that problem with non- uh, drug related, uh, caffeine is a drug. I mean, it's a legal drug, but people should, people don't think of it as a drug too much, but my, my, uh, vices that I admit to people is, is French fries, like potatoes, basically anything that comes in the form of a potato. I don't think it fits potato, which is usually just a salt delivery system. Sorry for the lag. Dishy McFlatface is looking. Okay. Okay. I got to catch up on this, uh, super chats here. Um, who was it? Jason is a pingin. That was such a great answer. I would just like to thank you for all the work and effort you put into your channel. Been watching you for years. Thank you, Jason. That was nice of you. CBD is not psychoactive. Okay. So we're going to talk about drugs now, everybody. Get, (laughs) get, get ready for telosive, uh, addicts. Randy says I'm addicted to stock. So I guess I'm addicted to gambling. Uh, if you're buying and holding, I wouldn't, call it gambling i would call that investing if you're the type of person that buys and sells stocks uh within a few months of each other then i would call that more gambling because that's very much like trying to predict short-term prices of stock which 
I do I do think is very very unpredictable and and I've seen the market having not being super invested uh, I haven't been investing for very long but just in the short term I've been in it I've seen the market react in very bizarre and curious ways where it's like a company will do great and the stock will tank and a company will do nothing and the stock will soar trying to act like you know what the, what's going to happen in the short term with a stock like that is is gambling but um just buying a, a stock and holding on to it for over a year i i wouldn't consider that a gamble that's just like you're investing in the company you're addicted to investing well that's a good thing it's kind of like there's good there's good things i wouldn't really consider addictions you know it's like saying you're addicted to breathing i have visible and i use an iphone 11 pro max it works really well and i live in a small city in pennsylvania that's good Steve died because he used weird alternative cancer treatment until it was too late. That's true. I've always said uh, in the past that the reason Steve Jobs is not here with us today is because he thought he had a better way of doing things. Um, and he was not always right. A lot of the time he was, but not al not always. Um, he was very smart in, in several subjects. Steve did LSD and you know what happened? He died. Drugs. <laughs> I don't think he died because of LSD, but... Um, it was a part, it was a type of, uh, what was it? I th it was a type of cancer. I'm trying to remember if it was a, oh, it was pan that's what it was, pancreatic cancer, which the doctors, when they looked into him, said it was very treatable. It was not, it was not a typical lethal type of cancer, but he thought he could, he thought he could, uh, cure it in his own way. After using the MacBook for a few weeks, did you find anything that you don't like? Oh, it's kind of... <laughs> kind of a hard hard question um yeah i mean the sd card slot is nice to have but i was importing footage on it this morning and it's a little slow i'll admit you know you're kind of used to the rest of the macbook being so fast it boots up so quickly it restarts so fast and videos export so fast that when i plug in my sd card and i drag the f uh, footage into um finder yeah it, it kind of takes a minute i was like hmm I know there's a faster standard they could have adopted, but I don't know. Maybe maybe the M1 Max chip couldn't handle the throughput, so they didn't do it. Um, so the SD card slots is a little bit slow. Uh, it's pretty nitpicky things. I mean, I miss the touch bar. I, I would have loved the touch bar to stick around. I understand why they got rid of it, because I understand I'm in the minority and most people don't like the touch bar, but... Um, and, you know, I, after using several MacBooks over the past four or five years that had touch bars, I was kind of used to this form factor of laptop having that screen there. And the fact that there's nothing there now is kind of like, hmm. well, I guess there's function keys now, but I'm used to those. I always wanted there to be like a separate detached uh, touch bar that I could have on a separate keyboard and connect it to my iMac Pro. If you go back and watch my old videos, I'm sure I've said that many, many times. So the fact that they kind of moved away from that is a bit sad. I wanted I wanted center stage. Center stage would have been nice on the MacBook. I'm guessing it was a technical limitation. They couldn't they couldn't shrink the ultra wide camera that small. Um, yeah, there's there's very little I don't like. I actually wanted to report on this. Um, we took the MacBook on our trip. I was not planning on video editing or, or I, you know, I prepared a bunch of videos in advance because I didn't want to work on this trip. There are trips in the future I plan on working on that we've been planning, but, uh, this was not one of them. And, uh, we just used the laptop for, you know, watching movies and shows during our downtime. It wasn't like there was that much of it, but on the entire trip, I was gone for eight nights total. So eight days. Never charged it. Never once. I, I left the house at 100%, obviously, because it was plugged in. But um, we used it at night whenever we wanted to watch a TV show or a movie or something. Um, you know, everybody else had kind of gone to sleep and we just wanted to relax and we wanted something with, you know, good speakers. And I actually didn't take my iPad Pro on this trip. So the iPad stayed behind. I, I pulled a Andy from Toy Story where I had... <laughs> uh, MacBook on one hand and uh, iPad on the other, and I was like, "Yeah, the MacBook's bigger, um, and the iPad. I don't have the Magic uh, keyboard case anymore, so it's it's harder to adjust this. So if you're in bed or something, the the MacBook's perfect. So for the entire eight day trip, I never charged it. I got back um, and opened it up and brought it to my desk for work this morning. It was at like 
fifty percent. Eight days of just light web browsing, okay? Granted, I didn't do intensive video editing or any live streaming or any of that, that kind of thing. But I did show it to my cousins. I, but, you know, I, I stopped at Mike's place, a friend of mine, and he wanted to see it. So I opened it up for him and I showed him stuff. And my wife played around with Reddit on it on occasion. So it's not like it didn't get used or anything. But never once during the entire trip did I plug it in. And um, that blew my mind that for like eight days, this thing didn't even go below half a charge, which is incredible. So um, hats off to the battery life on the MacBook Pro. You know, when I first got it, because the M1 Max chip is so fast, I've been throwing a lot of footage and doing a lot of work and editing on it. So um, it I, I've gotten experience with, okay, I know how the battery behaves when I'm giving it a lot of, of uh, work to do and a lot of attention. But uh, I hadn't seen how good the battery life is when you're kind of using it as just a casual, basic laptop for mild media consumption. Um, and you're not using it for work. So when I saw how good it was after that, I was like, dang, this is impressive. <laughs> this is really cool. Um, maybe you'll need 5G on that trip you plan on working on. <laughs> my point is, wherever I am that I might need my phone's hotspot, it could have been done with LTE. And my phone would be less hot and have more battery. People today think they know more than their doctors, and that's dangerous. Yes, it is. Um, my dad died of pancreatic cancer, but he had a more lethal kind than Steve had. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, Ryan. That's too bad. Um, I did a project on Steve, jo Steve Jobs back in sixth grade, and yeah, it was pancreatic cancer. Steve Jobs and his doctor actually got into an argument about treatment. Yikes. Sorry, Steve. That wasn't the way to go. Um, don't listen to these guys. All the cool kids take two Flintstones vitamins these days. You want to be like the cool kids, don't you? <laughs> that was the funny thing is that the people that offered drugs when I was younger never offered like, that. they weren't considered cool kids, which was the funny like concept that I, I always saw in the media. It's like, you know, that people are going to try to tell you, you got to be cool and you want to be with us in order to take drugs. It's like, I never had that argument. These, these were always kind of weirdos. Um, I mean, I was a weirdo too. That's why I was hanging out with them. <laughs> but, um, the, the cool kids never talked to me. So maybe if I talked to the cool kids, I would have been offered drugs by the cool kids. But I, I got, I'm just saying the the nerds and geeks, no, those nerds and geeks have drugs too. <laughs> oh, it's terrible. Don't do drugs. Um, as Michael Scott once said, coffee is the great equalizer. No, I, I know. My, a lot of people love coffee. My goodness. It's a giant industry. A lot of people in my family love coffee. I'm like the one person in my entire family that doesn't drink coffee regularly and, or alcohol. Um, again, I'll, I'll drink coffee if offered to me, you know, someone, we, we saw a lot of family on this past trip and, and a family member just you know, made a mug of coffee and brought it to me. And they were like, here you go. And I, I didn't ask for it or anything. I was like, oh, thank you. And I drank it. And it was okay. It's not really the flavor I prefer. But um, again, I, I won't be rude about it. I just don't want to incorporate it into my daily routine. I'm not going to be like, I don't drink this. And then splash it back in their face. Um, cool kids had drugs too. They just disguised it better. <laughs> I'm the type of person to be friends with all kinds of people, which is a blessing and a curse. I'm probably more like you, Stefan. Um, I've never had someone be like, I'm cool and you'll be too if you take this. <laughs> I'm sorry, it just sounds hilarious. Do you think it's possible to connect a console PS5 with HDMI or Thunderbolt to the MacBook Pro? I really would like to use my 16 inch as an external monitor. I think that requires a different type of HDMI. Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, what's your name? Emmanuel? Emmanuel. Um, you need HDMI in, which is a I believe a different type of uh, port than HDMI out. Uh, and I don't think the MacBook has HDMI in. It just has HDMI out. So it's the port, uh, you know, the cable looks bi-directional. And I think on the, you know, the male end it is. But on the female end, it's not bi-directional. I'm allergic to dairy, so I can only have black coffee, which I don't like. Oh, I'm sorry, YOLO. Uh, you could use a capture card for it, though. Oh, really? I didn't know about that. I wasn't a cool kid in high school starting out. I just sort of became one because the right 
uh, cool kids took me in. <laughs> I feel like if anybody's watching this live stream, you're instantly disqualified. <laughs> Did any cool kid watch Talos of Tech? I don't think so. If you're watching this, you're a nerd, and that's okay. Um, I'm not addicted to coffee, but I do really like it. Yeah, I've heard that before. I could quit any time. Ka uh, says, I like the smell of coffee a lot. Me too. That's the weird thing. Oh, thank you, Paul, for the super chat. Steve Jobs did admit before his death that all was vanity. That's the saddest thing, because he was right. Ugh, now we're getting deeper into this subject. My, my goodness. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I wish Steve could have held out for longer, but... Um, yeah, he just, he had his own way of doing things. Let's see. Water and juice are the only drinks I enjoy. I like soda. I just don't seek it. I, I don't buy it. I just drink it if offered to me. But I used to drink a lot of energy drinks when I was younger, which I quickly realized was, was not good. I was not really incorporating them into my daily routine, but I was still drinking more than I probably should have. And um, it was in a time in my life where I did not arrange my schedule very well. And I was just kind of, you know, staying up late, doing whatever. And, uh, I had no, uh, sleep health and, and not much mental health. And, and when I was tired and I wanted to work, I would just, you know, drink a Red Bull or a, or a monster. Um, and I would get shaky and I was like, okay, this is not good. So I haven't had any energy drinks for three years now. I think over three years, actually. Uh, would you date a girl if she uses an Android? You know, my wife, I wouldn't date a girl now because I'm married, but <laughs> when I met my wife, she was not on iOS. She is now, but I, <laughs> I think that's an outcome of me being an Apple sheep. Um, you know, if I just happened to be an Android user and then met my current wife, she probably never would have switched to Apple. But um, I am seriously not addicted. I swear on my mom's future grade. <laughs> Don't say that, Stefan. Don't say that. Uh, how did you pronounce any name correctly at first try? Oh, my name correctly at first? Wow. Canole? I usually am pretty terrible at names. I converted her. Well, I think my wife, before we were married and even while we were married, was typically using my old phones. She was not using, like, the latest, greatest Android phone. She was using... I don't think she was using a smartphone at all. I think she was using a, a flip phone at the time. Um, but she had like a Samsung tablet. Oh, thank you, Chris, for the super chat. Um, she had like a Samsung tablet that she used for social media and contacting people. Um, but then she started talking to me and hearing about how, why I like iPhones and iPads. I think my love of Apple products is contagious because, okay, I'll answer Chris's question in a second, but let me go on this side tangent. Um, a comment I get a lot in live streams and in, and in videos and on Twitter is people will say things like, Drew, I like your videos, but, uh, you know, I used to be on Android. I used to be anti-Apple, but after following your channel, you've convinced me. And now, now I really like I, iPhones and I like iPads and I'm within the Apple ecosystem now. But if you go back and look at all my videos, I've never done a video saying, like, why you should switch. I've never once come out and said... Stop using Android. You should switch to Apple now. Like, that's never been my point. I like Apple, and I prefer Apple for my own use cases, but for the most part, I've been pretty consistent on, like, you know, for some people, Android fits their needs better. Android doesn't fit my needs better, or preferences. Maybe we shouldn't use the term needs. That's kind of weird in the tech community. But um, I really... I just really loved the ecosystem that I could get with Apple, and I was like, I can't find this ecosystem elsewhere. And because of my line of work and what I appreciate and enjoy in my products, I didn't want to try, I didn't want to switch to anything else because I couldn't find anything better outside of the walled garden. I was like, yeah, th this is a walled garden, but everything outside of it is a desolate, dry wasteland. So yeah, I'm going to hang out in the walled garden. Um, and I keep getting these comments of people that are like, I've switched, I've moved over. And I think it's just because they see my happiness or they see how much I enjoy my Apple products and they just think, well, I want to enjoy my products too. And I guess I never really had that reaction with my PC or with my Android tablet or with my Android phone. So I want to be as happy with my products as Drew is with his. Um, and I want to have a bit of an ecosystem going because Drew seems to like that. So maybe I'll like it too. Um, 
so I think a similar thing probably happened with my wife. Um, we weren't, you know, I don't even think we were dating at the time, but she bought like an iPhone four, not when it was new. It was, it was pretty old at the time. Um, but she was like, you know, I wanted to get an iPhone. And once I started hanging out with her and showing her my MacBook, she was like, I want to get a MacBook too. Um, and then later she was like, I want an iPad. Um, so it just kind of, I think it's contagious, you know, that people will just see how happy you are with your products and then want to get their own version of that. Um, I love my coffee as long as it's full of Snickers or mint or candy cane cream. <laughs> there you go. So Chris Norton says, what drink do you like? So I like a lot of drinks. Um, for the record, uh, I haven't had an energy drink in over three years, but I did really, oh, Jeremy B just became a YouTube member. Thank you very much. That was nice of you. Jeez. Okay. We got a member. Thank you, Jeremy. Anyway, I loved the taste of energy drinks. And to this day, I still do. I, I haven't had one for a long time, but I did not quit energy drinks because I thought they tasted bad. Like, oh my God, they tasted delicious. Uh, I don't miss them because I don't think they were good for my health, but they did taste really, really good. I also love most kinds of juice. I love orange juice. I love lemonade. I love uh, cranberry juice, especially. Um, I also like, I, I don't buy juice though. Again, it's one of those things that like, if it's around at an event or at a party, I'll, I'll, you know, I was at the Rivian event recently and, and there was some lemonade there. I had, I had lemonade. Um, but for the most part, we don't buy any juice. Like there's no juice in my, in, uh, in my fridge right now. There's no soda. We don't buy soda. It's just one of those things. It's like, if it's, if it's handed to me, I'll drink it. But, um, I just don't seek it out basically. And I know I never got into coffee. I've been told by so many people in my life that I will eventually like coffee, but I've tried it many times and I've never liked the flavor. I love the smell. I wish it tasted the way it smelled, <laughs> but it never, it never does to me. Uh, I do like hot cocoa. That's probably something I'm guilty of. There's a lot of sugar in that, but it's the kind we get doesn't have any caffeine in it. Um, but especially when it's colder out, um, you know, we do have milk. I like milk. Um, so we'll make hot cocoa as a dessert, as like a sweet drink. Um, but again, it's not, it's not like in a daily routine. Everything else is a desolate, dark wasteland. Best way to describe Android. <laughs> I I could get by with Android. I don't hate Android as much as I do Windows. I tried to use Windows back in the day, and I, I owned a PC for many years, and it just frustrated me as something that I was trying to use for work. Um, it was the, the, the driver corruption in the automatic updates thing was just driving me nuts. Um, so I have, I, I like despise windows Android. There's nothing really inherently wrong with it. it. It has a lot of great things like the, the customization and all the different, um, flexibilities of wallpapers. And, and it's kind of infinite how much variety you can have within Android, which is impressive, but it's just all of that stuff Android offers is not that important or interesting to me. Whereas iOS feels very streamlined, very ironed out and, and stable. And no, there's not as much customization, but the, the apps feel better optimized. And of course, iOS communicates so well with all of my products and I can't emulate that with Android because Android, as soon as it goes on something bigger than a phone, suddenly doesn't work that well. Um, Android tablets aren't very great. I know there's like Chromebooks that run Chrome OS and those can't do as much as my Mac can. So it's kind of a, kind of a, you know, distorted ecosystem when you go outside of Apple's. I'm aware that if you buy the right stuff and download the right third-party software, you can kind of start to emulate Apple's ecosystem, but it requires a lot of extra work, um, which the reason I'm interested in Apple and the reason I like Apple is because I don't want to have to tinker with stuff. I don't want to have to customize and open up and replace and you know find the modules for this and I, I don't want to have to download this app and have a different email and a different password for this account and this account and have to keep it all synced between all those devices no the reason i like apple is it's like one email one password and i'm good across all this stuff it's like my apple card is under my apple id my iMessage is under my apple id my email is through my apple ID. like it just simplifies so much because i don't want to spend time trying to tinker and fix everything and android and windows feels like i have to tinker and fix things to my liking um do you drink tea at all no not much tea 
my wife likes tea a bit more than I do. Um, that, I guess there's like, there's teas that taste like juice. Like I like Snapple and they call that tea, but it really, <laughs> it's not like traditional tea, I guess. Maybe it technically counts, but I like fruity teas, I suppose. Um, let's see. I'll be typing to get someone with their Android phone be like, ew, why does it act like this? <laughs> What about Frappuccinos? I haven't had that many. I've had drinks from Starbucks I've liked. I just don't I don't want to pay for it. <laughs> we go me and my wife will go to Starbucks uh two times a year. And it's on each of our birthdays, because that's when you get a free drink. And uh we don't get a, a coffee drink. We get some kind of I forget what it's called, but it's like a chocolate, it's like a milkshake, basically. It's just a sugary thing. Um I do use Windows, but only for gaming now. Gotcha. Uh, you're welcome. Been watching since the attic. Wanted to celebrate since I just got hired at... Where? He just put exclamation mark. Love the content and keep it up. If you... Oh, you got hired at Apple. Wow. Congratulations, Jeremy. We've got an Apple employee in the chat. Thank you very much. If you ever need a guest to team up with Randy against Nick. <laughs> HMU. Okay. We'll have to all team up against Nick. It's going to be like the end of end game. Everybody's just <laughs> assemble. <laughs> we gotta defend our ports. Uh, just maxed out my 16 inch M1 Max MacBook Pro. Doesn't come till January. Wow, long wait, Tyler. I'm sorry. That's a long time. Uh, Noel Storm asked, "Are am I pumped for Hawkeye?" I've kind of lost interest in Marvel post Endgame. I just feel like none of the characters have grasped that much interest i never found hawkeye particularly interesting i know i'm terrible but i am very interested in the new spider-man uh just because i'm a big fan of the mcguire uh and you know the universe is clashing uh alfred molina as doc ock and i love defoe as goblin but i, I think it's the nostalgia as to why i'm excited for the new spider-man it's not uh it's not the new stuff as much um, I, we watched Eternals uh, on vacation, and it was not my favorite. Um, we saw Shang-Chi. It was well done. I just think the characters are kind of two-dimensional. Um, but what do I know? I'm an idiot. Uh, Chris says, my ex has left iOS. Oh, interesting. Okay. Uh, I've converted a few people to iOS. God, do I love the feeling of being right. <laughs> It's not about right or wrong. It's like people arguing if a hammer or a saw is a better tool. It's like, it depends what you're doing. Yeah, I know. New Spider-Man trailer today. Eternals was bad. Yeah. I was, uh, we, we got gift cards as a, I think it was an anniversary gift or, or something to a Regal Cinemas. And where I live, we're not like anywhere near a Regal Cinemas. So on our trip, we were like, let's use these gift cards because we're, we're going to be in a city that has a Regal. And that was our motivation to go to the movies. Like we had the gift cards and we hadn't used them. So we were like, uh, let's go to the movies. What's playing? And we kept reading all the movies in the theater. And I was like, eh, that doesn't sound good. That doesn't sound good. That doesn't sound good. <laughs> and everything that was playing didn't sound interesting. And we went with Eternals because that was like the only thing that sounded mildly interesting. I was like, well, I guess that's Marvel. And I know, I, I know who Marvel is. I was like, I don't care about the new James Bond or some movie with Matt Damon and, uh, the last duel with, uh, Adam driver. I'm sure it's well acted and well produced. I just, I don't care. I just really don't care. But once we, uh, sat down at the theater, we had these really, really nice reclining chairs and these swivel food trays that come out. And of course we bought a bunch of popcorn and snacks cause it was all uh, through the gift card and I could have watched anything. I was so comfortable. That theater was so nice. It was so relaxing. And we went on like a Monday morning. So there was like no one there. We had, there was like a couple of people in there, but we basically had the whole theater to ourselves. So I was like, I could watch any movie. I, I don't care what it is. As long as we got a big bowl of popcorn and nice reclining seats. I was like, this is cool. I would not pay for it, but it was nice. So the movie played. My wife fell asleep. Um, she liked it for the parts she was awake. She thought it was good. But um, 
I don't know. I I don't think uh, super powerful characters are those are too powerful. They have seemingly no limits on what they can do, and it makes the movies very predictable and not that interesting. Um, I heard someone sneeze behind me, and I was like, oh my god, I hate in-person movies. I was annoyed that there was no subtitles. Thank you for the super chat, Tim. I've gotten so used to subtitles and everything now. When I went to the theater, I was like, what are they saying? What's happening? <laughs> Uh, do you ever actually use Sidecar with iPad and Mac? I have in the past, but it's been kind of buggy. And I don't know. I feel kind of weird about having my iPad plugged in at 100% at all times. Um, also, I've had less reason to use Sidecar because I have my MacBook Pro here, but I still have the iMac Pro. Haven't sold it yet. I'm trying to find a good buyer for it. And the iMac Pro has just kind of become my default, like... YouTube machine, so I do all of my productivity stuff on the MacBook, but my iMac Pro has still really good speakers, and it's a bigger screen, as much as it's not 120 hertz and it's not mini LED, it's still a very large screen, so I put YouTube on there while I'm editing, and I'll, or I'll put Discord or Twitter on there while I'm editing, just so I can keep tabs on what's going on. Um, so I kind of already have two monitors going, and then I use my iPad for video thumbnails, so... You know, if you want to use over in the normal iPad OS interface, you have to kind of exit out of sidecar. So it just kind of throws everything off. Um, if I was on a trip and I was editing on vacation, uh, I would probably use sidecar more because I wouldn't have the big iMac display next to me. But do American cinemas show subtitles for English films? <laughs> they probably should, huh? That's a good question. Uh, as a blind person, the movie theater annoys me because of audio descriptions. Ooh. Yeah, I guess that would get annoying. Book of Boba looks awesome, though. Well, that's Disney Plus, right? I don't really care anymore what people use. I haven't seen Prosser's video, sorry. Um, double chocolate chip frap. Oh, that sounds good. It's all, To me, it's like the, the l less coffee you can get in the drink, the better. When I, when I'll drink some like cappuccino or frappuccino or whatever it is, I'll take a sip. Someone will get it and at, you know ask if I want to try it, and I'll try it, and I'll be like, "Yeah, I can almost not taste the coffee. If there was absolutely no coffee in this, it would be perfect." Okay, do you feel all of Apple software has been really buggy lately? I'm having software issues on all my Apple products, and most of it is relatively new. I feel like it's always perpetually that way. I mean, people typically don't remember buggy software as well. They remember it here and now, but um, long term they don't remember it. Because I I can recall people having software bugs pretty much with every generation. I have not had that many, to be honest. Um, I guess I had a small bug today where I was trying to airdrop files to my MacBook and it wasn't working. So I just restarted it and it started working. But it's a minor thing. It restarts so quickly it's hard to get annoyed. Um, there's no coffee in that one. Oh, good. Um, people are saying I was 15 is glitchy. Mine's been pretty good. I can't recall having many issues. The last version of iPad OS I had was pretty bad, but I just updated to 15.1 and it's working fine so far. Um, uh, how's the watch holding up? Great, Rick. Thank you for asking. I love the Series 7. I realized recently I haven't reviewed it yet, but I, I think... Um, I'm going to try to do something special for the Series 7 review. Uh, a little bit different than what I normally do, so it's coming. I haven't forgotten about the Series 7 review, but there will be one. Get a strawberry and cream frappuccino with pumps of toasted white mocha in it also, and it's amazing. Mocha sounds like coffee. I don't want coffee, Jeremy. Also, I don't go to Starbucks. <laughs> I don't. I don't like order things. Maybe I'll remember that for my birthday next year. Um, iOS 15.2 beta is not great on battery use, specifically in Apple Music. Well, I feel like it's, it, you, it's kind of dumb to complain when you're on a beta, when there's bugs. That is the purpose of the beta, to find bugs before it goes out to the public. Although, to be fair, in the past I've had betas that were more stable than the public release, but I'm just saying that's not, uh, what I'm, what I'm experiencing right now. Currently, the, the public release has been fine. I haven't had any major issues, maybe minor things here and there. But if you're on beta, then you're kind of asking for it. Um, 15.1 is amazing, but I have the 12.9-inch Mini LED iPad Pro, so that's probably why. I'm 2018, I, I'm on the 2018 Pro, and I haven't had any issues yet. 
Still use your HomePod biggies? <laughs> I've never heard I've never heard them referred to that as before. That is amazing. I want this name to become a common thing. Do I still use my HomePod biggies? People are reselling them for $600, $700 nowadays. What? That's not true. No, they're not. Uh, no, uh, to be honest, I haven't used it much. I'm looking at it right now. It's off. It's it's sitting at my desk, um, but I don't have Apple Music, so I'd have to AirPlay stuff to it. And normally when I'm editing, I can't have music playing because i got to focus on the content, and that's all coming from the onboard speakers, which still sound really good. Um that doesn't sound right, though. I don't believe anyone's paying $600 or $700 for HomePods. If so, I'm going to be very frustrated that I sold two of my Space Gray HomePods to my buddy Mike for much less than I paid for them. HomePod Biggies. <laughs> oh, that's such a great name. Do you ever? Did you ever have a go-to case? I know you don't rock one anymore, but I'm just curious. No, not really. I mean, typically I would buy Apple cases. The silicone ones, they always feel good and decent on their first day, but they age horribly. Everyone I know who bought an Apple silicon case, after owning them for like a year, it's all scratched and wear and it's falling apart. Um, so then I was like, okay, I'll get the leather case, but the leather case scratches and wears over time too. So my 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 go-to has been just to not uh, not get a case which has worked out pretty fine with the ceramic shield and everything. I haven't really noticed the uh, more damage or more scratches on my phone not having a case. Also, in the past, I was buying new phones every year, so I would always buy a case for the phone, and then a year later the case was useless because I would typically sell the old phone. So I'm still paying for that now. I have a bunch of cases in my closet for phones I don't have. Literally no one, no, no one in this household can use those cases. They don't fit my wife's phone. They don't fit my current phone. I try to find family members that have them, but it's hard because they already have a case and they don't really want more. Um, so we've, I think we are going to sell a bunch of them. Just get a deep brand case. I just don't like most cases. I haven't found a case I liked. Um, I cracked my phone screen and that gave me religion about cases. Well, maybe that's what I'm waiting for. I haven't cracked a phone screen ever in all my years of phone ownership. So I've never had the desire for a case. I ordered a blue HomePod mini and I'm so excited to see it. I did check out the blue HomePod mini. My friend Mike bought one and was using it um, when we visited his place. It's pretty good. It sounds great as, as always. I mean, I had heard the HomePod mini before, um, but I was playing around with it and upside down, it sounds better, which I find funny. Um, I don't know if uh, Randy can attest to, to that. I don't know. He might've said something about it at one point, but when I flipped the HomePod mini upside down, the sound quality felt more clear, which was kind of funny. Um, but I was kind of disappointed that on the blue HomePod, uh, the, the glass at the top is still white. I was hoping they would kind of change the color of the glass to match whatever the, the fabric of the HomePod was. Sebastian says, still waiting on Universal Control. I'm really scared they're just going to air power it. Universal Control was by far like the most exciting feature of macOS Monterey that I really, really wanted to try. And that's the one thing they haven't done yet. So <laughs> I have Monterey, but I haven't really utilized much of the new features. Um, Apple should make a HomePod Pro Max. Yeah, because the the normal HomePod sold so so well, right? Um, HomePad Mega. Let's see. He's saying Stock X, eBay as well. Really? I still have my HomePod Mini from last year. It's my literal alarm clock, music player, and find me thing. Well, that's good. Yeah, the HomePod Mini seems great. I just don't have a use for one. Um, I would recommend it to people, though. Like, if you're if you're into Apple Music and you've got an Apple ecosystem, once the HomePod Mini came out, I was fairly confident, like, okay, no one should buy the full-size HomePod, which it sounds like, you know, that made the, <laughs> that made sense uh, as to why they discontinued it. But I we, we cranked the volume all the way up on the HomePod Mini, and I was like, yeah, this is plenty loud. Like... The current, the, the original HomePod, the one I'm staring at off camera here, is stupidly loud. Like, the, the number of use cases of people actually listening to music that loudly is so low. And the price was so high, like, it, I understand why it flopped. It makes perfect sense. And 
I think Apple has figured out that like, okay, this $100 price point is more reasonable. You don't need a super overpowering speaker with Siri built in uh, in order to make it worth people's while. Like as long as the sound quality is decent, as long as it's good enough, um, people will justify it. So uh, I think that the market has kind of spoken that the smart speaker as a product is a $100 or less type device. Uh, the, the devices that are over $100 are not worth it to the vast, vast majority of people. Um, I miss the touch bar. Yeah, I do too. You're tight with your money for sure. I think there can be a difference between being tight and just being smart. You know, it's like, I wouldn't say someone that blows all of their money is just, you know, not tight. It's like, yeah, you can be stupid. There's a lot of dumb ways to spend money. That's for sure. <laughs> Capitalism and make sure of that. <laughs> Most of the new Monterey features are Apple Silicon only. Focus features is all I've noticed on my Intel MacBook Pro. I don't use the focus thing. And a lot of people seem to like that, but I've, I think I've just naturally filtered my notifications the way I like them to the point that I just need do not disturb and, you know, normal mode. Not much in between. The OG HomePod sounds so good, but so does the HomePod Mini. And I think most people realize that for smart speakers... Something you put in your bedroom or something you put in the living room or the kitchen. You don't need it to blare music insanely loud. And the HomePod Mini does get plenty loud. So as long as the sound quality is decent at a mild volume, which is where most people are playing this music, um, it's totally worth the money. Like, sound quality of the HomePod Mini probably is equal to the original HomePod when you're below 60% volume which is like 98 percent of the time for most people um so yeah the original home pod sounds good but the the people that would appreciate a loudspeaker like that at high volume regularly are not going to buy a home pod they're going to buy something that they can plug into directly um they got a decent amount of bass in the mini it's selling well for a reason I hate how you have to long press on iMessage now to reply instead of just swiping over. Oh, okay. I guess that was spam. Um, I'm thinking of getting the iPhone 13 mini. Do you like it? I've never tried the 13 mini, but I think you'll enjoy it. Yeah. I think it's a good deal. Uh, just make sure that you need the features the 13 mini offers over the 12 mini. Because if you're just looking for a small, newish iPhone, 12 mini might save you 100 bucks and get the job done. HomePod Mini makes sense for the masses. Nobody needs loud sound. Well, yeah. L less people need loud sound. Very few people. Basically, no one has found a way to successfully make a expensive smart speaker. All smart speakers that are north of $100 do not sell well. Um, I use focus mode and shortcuts to open movie gaming home screens on my iPad. Okay. Hope that works for you. I just use them the same way regardless. <laughs> Um, you need larger speaker. I don't think everybody needs larger speaker. I, I would love to sell this one, but I don't want to give it away for too less. It does sound good though. Yes. The original HomePod that nailed audio quality, but it did not nail price point, which is fairly important with a smart speaker because it's not something a lot of people are convinced they need. So if you want to convince people that they should buy a smart speaker, you got to get the price a lot lower for people to start justifying it. Um, yeah, Samsung never even got the Galaxy speaker, the Bixby speaker out. Never happened. <laughs> it's kind of funny how much they talked about it and then it just went away. Um, it's probably the right call, though. Samsung realized that their digital assistant didn't stand a chance. Um, yeah, it's kind of a weird market. I don't have a go-to case, though. Let's see. It's just the syrup, but toasted white mocha is only available during holiday. Ooh. Okay. Um, give a storm ring. Oh, yeah. Sorry, I was just reading the past messages about the coffee. I was making sure I didn't miss anything. Um, I converted my aunt to Mac OS. Now I'm eyeing her smartphone. <laughs> Everyone's got to convince their family members to switch to Apple because that is the good way. You need smaller speakers about the size of an earbud. Give it foam tips and call it a day. Oh, yeah, yeah. Randy got his uh, AirPods Pro foam tips. He was telling me about them. 
I was using my AirPods Pro today. I think my Apple Sheep ears have adjusted because they seem to fit pretty well. I'm, I want to try the foam tips. I'm just worried. I'm paranoid that Apple is going to switch to some different connection on AirPods Pro 2 and then the foam tips will be dated and I'll have to buy them again. So I'd probably give the foam tips a shot as soon as the second gen AirPods Pro come out. What's the most underrated Apple product in your opinion? Ooh. Most of Apple's products get a lot of attention. So it's kind of hard to say which one is underrated. Is there anything Apple does that's underrated? Um, hmm, I feel like the iPhones get a lot of attention. Oh, yeah, actually the Mini is a good example. As far as we know, the 12 Mini, I haven't heard anything about the 13 Mini yet, but the iPhone 12 Mini did not sell very well, allegedly. Um, from what we had heard, way more people bought the 12 and 12 Pro and 12 Pro Max. Everybody bought those. But after using the 12 Mini for 10 months, like that was an awesome phone. And I don't think there's enough people that are a fan of that. Um, Apple Card's pretty underrated. Although I, I met someone on our trip that had one. And I was like, oh, wow. You know, a non-techie person that just got the Apple Card. Interesting. It's, uh, it's free and you get a decent amount of cash back on it, I would say. If you live in a place with a lot of Apple Pay support, which I do, then 2% back everywhere you use Apple Pay is quite a bit. And if you plan on, you know, you get 3% back with Apple, which people are kind of like, yeah, but I don't buy that much stuff from Apple. But it's like, yeah, but the stuff you do buy from Apple is usually very expensive. Like half the reason the Apple card is worth it, in my view, is just because I bought this MacBook Pro. That's one purchase, yes. It's not a common thing. It's not a regular thing. But that free credit card, when being used to purchase this MacBook, which cost a lot, literally saved me hundreds of dollars. Over 300 bucks. Just by using a free credit card. Didn't, you know, there's no annual fee. There's no membership you have to pay for to have access to that card. And I have not seen a free credit card with cashback that good. Um, there are some that do occasional 2% or selective 5%. Um, and then, of course, there's... A lot of people bring up the Amazon Prime card, but I remind them you need Amazon Prime for that. If you don't have Prime, you can't get the card. So it's it's not technically free. Uh, it's a good value because uh, if you use Amazon Prime for you know shipping stuff and Prime Video, if you use Amazon Prime, yes, that credit card is worth it. I'm not saying all other credit cards aren't worth it. I'm just saying as far as a free to use credit card goes, Apple Card's pretty dang good. Um, Apple Siri remote. Yeah, I don't know if I'd say it's underrated. I feel like most people love it. Um, and a lot of people seem to give it credit. It's just the the TV it works with is so sucky that I'm hesitant to say that Siri remote is underrated. Um, let's see. Or when they glitch you and get 6% accidentally and then they give you an extra $66. There you go. I want the Apple card, but I have no credit. Um... Whoever your current bank is will probably offer a credit card of some kind that is free and you can use it to build credit. Um, I hate it when people say, what's $300 when I'm spending $6,000? It's $300. Yeah, I mean, if if you saw $300 lying on the sidewalk, would you pick it up? How, how long does that take you to pick up and like, okay, in the world of no cash? Maybe you find, well, I mean, $300, that's something you call the police over, right? $300, that's something you, like, check around. Like, who dropped their wallet? You know, that's a lot of money. I want to make sure they get it. Let alone, like, okay, I go into the wallet app on my phone. I tap a few buttons, and now I can get $300 back on my next big computer purchase. You know, that's totally worth it. Even if it's not something you do regularly. You know, I'm not going to buy $6,000 Max that often. Um, but even if you do it once... That using that credit card instead of just a traditional debit card has now saved me hundreds of dollars. So I would say that's awesome. Um, the card is also bankruptcy friendly to a point. Yes, it, it is painfully obvious to miss a credit card payment on the Apple card. I've used other banks' credit cards. They make it fairly easy to miss. Um, like if, if you just get distracted and you fall behind on it, you'll... You'll miss a credit card payment. I haven't, but I've seen or heard of people that just literally lost track of time and, and forgot to pay off the credit card by its due date because it's kind of, 
hidden and they don't really give you that many alerts as to like, hey, you're going to get charged an interest fee at this point. Whereas through the notifications on iOS and the wallet app, it's like, hey, you know, pay this now. This is how much the interest fee will be. It's very obvious. Um, I think you need to have an iPhone to get an Apple card. So I don't know how free, but lots of people have iPhone. Yeah, I would, I guess that's true. I, I just see the iPhone is more of like a, a hardware purchase that lots and lots of people have. Um, whereas Amazon Prime is a service that has an infinite cost. You can't buy it outright. An iPhone you can buy for, you know, 400 bucks. So maybe I shouldn't consider the Apple Card free, but it's free for iOS users. That I think that's the fundamental difference. Uh, difference. The Amazon Prime costs money to retain that card. Every year you're going to be paying for it. Whereas the Apple Card, you get it once, you could keep it with your iPhone for seven, eight years. And you don't have to pay any monthly fee for it or or, or annual fee because you have an iPhone. Um, but it's actually an interesting question. I'm curious if I'm thinking to myself now, what happens if your iPhone gets discontinued, but you have your Apple Card attached to it? I assume it will keep working. But will there be a point where it's like, okay, we're not going to allow the Apple Card to work on phones this old? That Would that happen? I don't know. It's an interesting question. With auto pay, the missed payments are less of an issue. Set a minimums payment, or better yet, don't put any balance on credit cards. Yeah, I mean, auto pay is a thing, but sometimes people will put a bunch of stuff on a credit card one month and then put nothing on it the following month, and auto pay kind of throws that off. So I understand why some people don't do auto pay, basically. Like, for example, my wife has a credit card. Uh, that's free to use, and you can select one category of spending to get 3% cash back on. And one of those categories was gas. So unfortunately, you know, we're saving up for an EV, but we don't have one yet. So we got to buy uh, gas for now for our car. Um, when we go on road trips and stuff, we spend a lot of money on gas. So I use that card at every gas station, we get 3% back on, on instead of the Apple card because a lot of gas stations, some of them have contact lists, but most of them just want the physical swipe. So I'd only get 2% or 1% back if I use the Apple card. So that's why we use her card. And on road trips, like the one we just took, we spend a lot of money on gas. So we want that 3% back. Other months, we hardly drive anywhere because we both work from home and we'll spend seven days... Uh, a, a week just at home because we stock up on food and groceries and, you know, we've got everything we need so we'll just not drive anywhere for a while. So there have been several months this year where we have not bought gas at all. One tank, because our car goes pretty far. Like, on a full tank our car can go like 500 miles. It's pretty crazy. Um, so we will not drive a full 500 miles within a whole month. Um, so if we had auto pay um set to a certain amount or whatever the balance is. Um, I guess hopefully, you know, you wouldn't go into the negative on the credit card balance, which you can technically do, but, um, basically the Apple card makes it super easy. What is your opinion on writing with fountain pens in order to take a break from technology? Fountain pens. Is there a specific de definition of fountain pens? But yeah, I think it's a good idea. I actually write, um, pretty regularly in a journal that uh, is not on my iPad. I don't use the Apple Pen. It's it's a paper-bound notebook because it does allow me to distance myself from technology every morning. So I, I have a pen. I don't know if it's a fountain pen, but it's a pen that I, I write with every day. Um, so yeah, I used to be against that. I was like, no, I'll just do everything on the iPad. But um, I found it too distracting. And it doesn't matter if there's do not disturb or I can silence cer certain notifications. It's just... Um, everything is just so close on the iPad. Like you can, you can check this so easily and check this so easily. Um, so yeah, I, I just do the card. Exxon stations give you 3% back on the Apple card. Not sure if they're the cheapest in your town, but sometimes here they are. No, they're definitely not the cheap, <laughs> especially where I live. Exxon is not that good. Um, there's specific gas stations where I live that get to bypass the California gas tax. 
So they're like always busy because they are way cheaper than everybody else, including Exxon. So we'll go there and then get 3% back on uh, my wife's credit card. I think Apple Card should do a higher tier card with travel benefits, concierge services. That would be great. I did a video on this like two years ago, but yeah, I, I totally agree. I think that there's a lot of high spenders in the Apple community and Apple could probably make a ton of money just by offering a higher tiered Apple card with better better benefits, but it has a month uh, monthly or annual service. Like maybe you need Apple One. You need to have Apple One Premier in order to get this Apple card, but it'll have better cash back and that kind of stuff. Costco gas is the best gas. <laughs> Costco usually has lower prices, but the the local um, the the local stations we go to are are even cheaper than Costco. So we don't we don't go to Costco. Um, they are ink channel flow, not ballpoint. Takes no pressure to write. Very cool that you write on real paper. Pilot Metropolitan. Metropolitan is a good starter pen if you do write on paper. I'm sure it is, and I trust your judgment. I just have never had a desire to spend money on a pen. Um, we just kind of have leftover pens. Isn't that weird? I don't remember buying these pens, but we just have pens around the house. And I'll just use those until they go out. Um, no gas is the best gas. Yeah, exactly. We go to Fred Meyers and they have a cash back deal. I don't want to say exactly where I'm getting my gas because I don't want people trying to pinpoint where I am. But basically, we get gas cheaper than Costco. Uh, yes, I'll watch the Spider-Man trailer. I got to watch uh, Amazing Spider-Man 2 soon. We're going to review it on Talos of Movie Reviews, so stay tuned for that. Um, yeah, Apple Card Pro would be awesome. I, I agree. I think especially if there's lots of people that buy the new iPhone every year providing some kind of pre-order prioritization um, for Apple Card Pro or... Oh, Randy had some good ideas too. I think they were saying like 6% back on all, on all Apple purchases. And um, it was going to be like 2% back on everything you use with the card instead of 1%. And... Or it might have been higher than that. I don't know. But 9 to 5 Mac had a similar proposition thank you andrew for the super chat do you think the apple upgrade program is worth it <sighs> worth is a tricky question because i don't know your financial situation i don't know how much you make a year i don't know your disposable income i would personally not recommend it to most people just because i think iphones are going to get smaller and smaller upgrades at this point and i don't like having most things as a monthly membership if i can pay for something outright i would rather do that because it simplifies my expenses whereas the upgrade program is trying to get you into this mindset of the iphone having the latest iphone is a monthly cost don't think of it in you know big expenses think of it as uh, it's only a dollar a day two dollars a day thank you dj there's this, but new MacBook unbox time for me. Congratulations. That's awesome. I hope you like it, DJ. 24 months? Is he the first person to hit 24? Congratulations. That's awesome. Um, but yeah, basically, if you're the type of person that that thinks you will appreciate and utilize all of the tiny iPhone upgrades each year, like I've been buying the new iPhone every year, mostly for my channel, but also because I, I care about a lot of the new features. But I'm putting my foot down now in saying I'm actually planning on holding on to my 13 Pro Max for more than a year. Um, because essentially, the longer you hold on to an iPhone before you upgrade it, the more money you save. So it's not a lot of money. I did a whole video breaking that down. Like, how much does it cost to own the latest iPhone each year? And it's not as much as people think. Um, if you're able to offset the cost by selling your old iPhone for a decent amount and using that money towards your new iPhone, you'll spend less than the upgrade program where you're just like constantly spending a monthly fee and then trading in the old one and it's just this clean, simple cycle. I guess I would recommend it to people that don't want to deal with selling their old iPhone and they definitely want the new iPhone every year. That's, that's what you got to ask yourself. Like if I absolutely for the next five years, I see myself buying the new iPhone and I don't want to have to find a seller, and I, I don't want to have to go through the whole trade-in process. You know, I just, I guess, upgrade program, you still have to do that. Um, so I guess there is a demographic for it, 
I don't think it's worth it for me. I would rather hold on to my 13 Pro Max for a few years and see how it ages. Um, just because I feel like the iPhone, for, for use cases that I care about, has peaked. Like, once I got 120 hertz, I was, I was basically done. Because um, the 12 mini, there was honestly not much wrong with that phone. I really liked the 12 mini, and I was comfortable saying, if we don't get 120 hertz this year, I'll keep the 12 mini. I, I don't want another iPhone without 120 hertz, because... The camera was fantastic. The battery life wasn't great, but it was still enough to get me through the day. The display, aside from being 60 hertz, it was still wonderful. Face ID is good. I was like, there, there's really nothing wrong with this phone. So it feels, it already this year felt kind of silly for me to buy a new one because the 12 mini was still, I loved it and, and I loved using it. I just really notice and appreciate that high refresh rate. That's something I pick up on every time I went from my iPad to my phone. I notice the difference. And and now that I have 120 on my laptop too, I really, really appreciate that high refresh rate. And every time I look at an iPhone now, like my wife's or my friends that aren't 120, I do notice it. I pick up on it instantly. I'm like, yeah, it's not 120. Yeah, I sold my 12 mini. It's gone. I don't have it. But um. As soon as I got the 13 Pro Max, I was like, okay, now this has even better camera than the 12 mini, which I already thought was plenty. It has a smaller notch, which I didn't even find the notch too intrusive, and I still love Face ID to the point that you know, cinematic mode blew my expectations out of the water. That was really, really good, and I do plan on... I didn't have time today, but I want to do a deep dive on iPhone video and, and kind of compare all the different formats. But um, the camera's incredible, there's things I would like change, but I'm not willing to upgrade for them. Like, I can't think of anything the iPhone 14 can do that would make me want to buy it. Um, there's things I think they should do. Like, I would love USB-C. I would love if there was, you know, no camera bump or no notch or those kinds of things. But I'm not going to hold my breath for it. And I'm not going to pay money for those features. I just think they should do it. Um, did I did sell my 12 Mini. So I hope that answers your question, Andrew. I mean... It depends on the type of person you are, but yeah, worth, uh, anytime someone asks, is this worth it, it's almost always going to be, it depends on blank, you know, I can never just do a blanket statement, unless it's uh, AirPods Max, no, <laughs> I'm going to get a bunch of hate for that, C click the dislike and you can't see, try to cancel me, good luck, <laughs> no one will know how many dislikes this video has, um, what about your iPad Pro, are you going to sell it? I still use it for video thumbnails. I just have no reason to upgrade it. Um, what are my predictions for the iPhone 50? Very thin, much better camera, brighter display, probably still one day battery. <laughs> no notch. Uh, but yeah, I think there's a lot of the same coming. Just better cameras, better displays, thinner, better battery life. But overall, I don't expect anything drastically different. If you weren't a YouTuber, what would you be doing? It's hard to know because there's a lot of alternate realities that could have unfolded. The plan, I got to go here in a second, so we'll probably end on this subject. But um, the plan originally, when I told my parents I didn't want to go to college and that I wanted to pursue YouTube, they were unsure about that because everyone in my family went to college and they had never met anyone that could make YouTube uh, a job. So they were kind of hesitant to to just say, okay, just do YouTube now. Um, cause I wasn't making enough off of it to live, to, to, you know, support myself. So they said, all right, you can work a manual labor job, which was a Mandarin ranch and do YouTube on the side. But if after a year, YouTube isn't going anywhere, we want you to go to a trade school. And at the time there was this lineman's college nearby that I could, uh, basically go and, and I think it would only take two years of school at this at this uh, trade school, and I would be able to work on telephone poles and, and power lines, and that's what you know linemen do. They work on wires, um, and they get paid really really well. And the the trade school did not cost very much, so that was our backup plan if YouTube didn't work out. So I have to imagine if I wasn't a full time YouTuber, I probably would have ended up in that direction, and I would have been moving. Um, pretty regularly because the, the hiring rate of the lineman college was very high. It was like everybody who graduated from the lineman's college found a job if they were willing to move and they got paid pretty well. I don't know how well, but um, yeah, I have to imagine if YouTube didn't work out, I'd probably be doing something like that. Uh, has the whole dislike 
uh, button topic been discussed already? What's your bottom line? Yeah, I, the bottom line is it's stupid. Uh, it was a bad idea, and it doesn't fix any problem because people will just comment, this is the dislike button, and everyone will just hit the like on that. Also, uh, you, content creators can still see the percentage, so I don't understand how that helps their mental health at all. And it makes perfect sense because this is this is classic YouTube. They always do... They always ignore what needs work and try to fix something that isn't broken. And I don't think there was anything broken with the like to dislike ratio. I think it was fine the way it was. And they were like, oh, we got to change it because they were probably tired of um, getting canceled on all their videos. YouTube would keep posting stuff and, you know, rewind was a thing. And YouTube executives would post videos and get tons of dislikes. So they were probably just sick of getting canceled. So they got rid of it um, to protect themselves. You said if cinematic mode was able to record at 4K at 60, you'll upgrade. I never said that, RM. I said that would that would be probably the most tempting feature, but it's not a... Wherever you heard me talk about 4K at 60 cinematic mode, go back and watch it. I did not say I would upgrade. I just said that that was probably the closest thing that would tempt me. But out of all the things they could do, that, that would be the highest on the list of just like what... What could they do that would make you want to upgrade your iPhone? Um, but it's not a guarantee. In fact, uh, on a later podcast, I, I clarified that uh, if I'm using an iPhone, it's not going to look... If I'm recording a video with my iPhone, it's not going to look as good as my Blackmagic anyway. So why do I care if it's 4K or 60 frames a second or not? If, it, if I'm just going for it's good enough... You know, I've done videos shot on my iPhone and people were like, I can tell, but it still looks good. So if I'm if I'm compromising by not filming with the black magic, I shouldn't get hung up on tiny details like the resolution and frame rate because most people are watching on their phone. So no, I, I have not ever said I will upgrade for 4K at 60 cinematic mode, just that that would be the top thing that would tempt me. Like, no camera bump is nice, but I would not be tempted. USB-C is nice, but I would not be tempted. Um, portless is kind of nice. <laughs> Thank you, Brain Freak, for the Super Jet. Um, we were asking for other platforms to add dislike buttons, not for YouTube to nerf their dislike button. I don't think it makes as much sense on other platforms, but a lot of YouTube is, is people clicking on a video and trying to figure out if it's worth their time, and the dislike button was helpful for that, so... I hope they change it back, but it, YouTube makes dumb decisions, so. Oh, well. Anyway, I, I have to get going now, guys, um, but I do have a tech video ready to go, so I guess I can, I, I, I can drop it just as uh, we're wrapping up the stream here. That way you guys can check in, but I'll set it to public now, and it's a bit of a refreshing one. We're not talking about Apple today. We're actually talking about Starlink. Which has a which has done great today. Very few frame drops. We're at 0.6 percent after over 90 minutes of streaming, which is pretty good. And I'm at the higher bit rate today, so um, I'll drop the link in the chat to the new video. You guys can check it out. It should be public, and uh, lots of good things and and lots of improvements coming with Starlink. So we've got some updates to talk about over on uh, the new video for the day. So thank you all for watching. Have a good one. Bye bye.